Gangsters, murderers, thieves, and fear are on the streets. New tabloid newspapers splash crime all over the front pages. In Chicago, you can rent a gun by the hour. In the Sears catalog, you can buy one for $12. In New York, a policeman finds a list on a murdered gangster. His rate card, punches $2. Nose and jaw broke, $10. Ear chewed off, $15. The big job, 100 bucks and up. Detective Bureau Chief Thomas Burns, a man who follows his own set of rules. He's shrewd. And he's very tough. Among his methods is a technique his detectives call the third degree. First degree, persuasion. Second degree, intimidation. Third degree, pain. In four years, Burns claims he's arrested 3,300 criminals. He solved the biggest heist of the 19th century, nearly a $3 million Manhattan bank robbery. Reporters call him the greatest crime buster in the history of the New York City police force. His very manner, the size of him, his menacing shoulders and arms, the bark of his voice. Pickpockets, forgers, whoever cracked a safe, unscrupulous rogues. Crooks are now afraid of their shadows. They lead double lives. But tracking down criminals isn't easy. There's no official ID, no birth certificates, or driver's licenses. If a criminal is known in one town, he just moves to the next. Criminals are anonymous. Burns is tackling this problem head on and bringing police work into a new age. This is his rogues gallery. Mug shots of 7,000 known lawbreakers. Using photography to identify criminals will change detective work forever. Annie Royley, alias Little Annie, deceitful servant. The mug shots are distributed to police departments around the country. But these are more than just pictures. Burns is also building psychological profiles of criminals. Rufus Minor, he comes from a very good family. It's a pity he's a thief. This is the first attempt to create a national crime register. A city as diverse as ours is going to have a significant crime problem that you've got to be on top of. Even today, mugshots still catch criminals. 12 million are taken every year nationwide. That's more than the entire population of Ohio. And it all began with the rogues gallery over 120 years ago. Any questions? But crime isn't the only problem plaguing urban streets. In many cities, slums are reaching epidemic proportions. Multiple families crammed into one small room. Human waste pours into the streets, alleys, and open courtyards. People were crowded in. They were windowless tenements. Sometimes you had no internal plumbing, just privies in the basement, in the backyard. And the Lower East Side during these years was the single most crowded place in the entire world. Jacob Rees, Danish immigrant, crime reporter, photographer. He gets leads for stories from Chief Inspector Burns. Now, he's about to expose the hell of tenements. Jacob Rees knows what it's like to be poor. 15 years ago, 
he lost his job in a stock market crash. It's midnight, but Reese has a new technology that will change the public perception of poverty forever. An explosive powder that produces enough light to photograph in the dark. This is one of the first ever photographs of slum life. It shocks millions. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jacob A. Reese, and this is how the other half live and die in New York City. Magazines refuse to print his work, so Reese puts on his own magic lantern shows. His mission, to show the nation's wealthy something they've never seen before, filth and desperation on their doorstep. At this block, nine dead were carried out this year alone. Five in baby coffins. What he demonstrated was that there is another reality, uh, that all that prosperity didn't trickle down all the way to the bottom, and there were some deplorable living conditions. And this country was not just forced to confront those conditions, but then was moved to begin to deal with them. Reese publishes his pictures in a book called How the Other Half Lives. It will sell more than 28 million copies. Within two decades, the worst of New York's slums are torn down. Tenements sell at auction for as little as a dollar. Reese's campaigning forces all New York schools to build playgrounds and landlords to install toilets inside apartments, not outside. It is the first step in tackling the slums. But as cities keep on growing, an even bigger challenge remains. In New York alone, Nearly 40,000 die in one year from diseases because of this filth. But one clean crusader is about to change everything. 